Classic recycling. Made and presented by myself, Parker L. Gunn, Luke F. Lawson, and Sebastian M. Savalas. The problem. There are flaws to plastic recycling. This problem is multifaceted and complex. However, there are a few core issues. To start, plastic products made from recycled plastic could be dangerous. Um, to, an aspect of this is that plastic recycling degrades the plastic. Because of the chemical nature of plastic recycling, the recycling process can damage the polymer structure of the plastic. Supporting this, Dr. Hannah Ritchie, PhD recipient in geosciences from the University of Edinburgh, states that plastics typically degrade in quality during the recycling process. For most recyclable plastics, they are typically only suitable for recycling once. As a result, most recycled plastic eventually reaches landfill, even when it goes through an additional use cycle as a new product. Recycling typically delays rather than prevents plastic disposal to landfill or incineration. Additionally, a study done by researchers from Bruno University London found that recycled plastic bottles leach more chemicals into drinks stored therein than quote virgin plastic bottles which had not been recycled. This could lead to the leaching of harmful substances. A second facet is that plastic recycling is harmful to recycling. Toxic chemicals are used, and according to the highly respected research team at Human Rights Watch, workers in plastic recycling facilities have direct exposure to toxic pollutants released during the recycling process. 14 of the 20 workers who reported on occupational health told Human Rights Watch that they developed illnesses due to their work, including chronic respiratory conditions such as having trouble breathing, severe headaches, chest tightness, and asthma. Finally, Plastic recycling is just when they use. According to Amelia Milbrand and others, in the United States, only 5% of plastic materials were recycled in 2018. Most of this plastic goes to landfill or gets burned on a new night. Solution one, change plastic recycling process. The current recycling process for many kinds of plastics are not as efficient or as beneficial as they could be. Most plastics are not being recycled, rather they are being landfilled. Dan and Nord, the Boston Globe's climate producer, found that recycling will never solve the plastic waste crisis. There's simply too much plastic, and it's just not practical to recycle most of it. This is supported by Louise Gilliard, a reporter for Politico with a master's degree, as she found that of the 30 million tons of plastic waste generated in the EU in 2015, only 17% is collected for reuse or recycling, according to the European Environmental Agency. This leads to the need of new plastic recycling ways. Some of these new processes are homomicronization, dissolution, pyrolysis, and more. The best of these potential new three is homomicronization, a process that recycles plastics without using any chemical additives. Jim Wilson said, environmentalists are expired, excited about the prospects of homomicronization because it promises to find a new use for plastics, which are quickly clogging landfills. Homomicronization could change the economics, thus making it profitable to recycle. Some limitations include that these new processes are relatively new, and thus have not had much time in use. For that reason, we may not know all the potential negative downsides of these processes. Therefore, these new recycling processes will need time to be fully experimented and developed until they are safe. It also takes time to come up with new recycling processes, but this lost time costs money which is a limitation. An implication of this solution is that the recycling industry would then have better and more efficient processes to recycle plastic. Our second solution was to reduce plastic use. The overuse of plastics has encouraged the growing dependency on single-use products. This can be things like plastic bags and plastic water bottles. The European Commission, governing body of the European Union, has stated that over 70% of all beach trash is of single-use origin. In the same article, they state that single-use plastic is the most likely to end up in the ocean. The solution is also viable because these unrecycled plastics have tangible alternatives, most of which are wholly recyclable. They also can be beneficial for the environment. Earth Day, a reputable activist network, has stated that over 12 million barrels of oil could be saved each year by switching from plastic to paper bags in supermarkets alone. In a quote from Agata Denda, a researcher of sustainable development at New York University 
She states, within the scope of waste prevention, promoting reusable takeout food containers to reducing, leads to reducing the amount of plastic waste, as well as emphasizing the practice of reuse. The reusable space can, therefore, inform reflection on the potential for an axiological or fundamental shift in waste conceptualization. This quote explains how simply changing our daily tendencies surrounding plastic use can help to change the dire plastic pollution situation. However, this solution does have its limitations. Paper bags cost, on average, 47 cents more than plastic bags. To combat this, supermarkets in the United States will most likely have to increase the prices of goods. However, this solution also has great implications for the environment as not only would it help remove plastic from the ocean today, it would also help the movement to completely replace plastics for the future. Our third solution is education. As we have seen from this graph, from the World Economic Forum's 2022 Climate Progress Survey, many people are concerned over the importance of recycling. The turquoise in this graph demonstrate, or represents the percent of people who believe recycling is of extreme importance. On a global scale, that is about 84%. But then why, as this gave said, only 5% of plastic being recycled? This graph from the same survey shows the leading reasons why people aren't recycling. On a global scale, it's shown that around 40% of people say that they don't recycle because of lack of trust and lack of knowledge. Both of these could be fixed using education, or at least mitigated, and that would theoretically increase recycling by 40%. But what would this entail? This would involve special <coughs> sections in K-12 science curriculums on recycling. According to Jeffrey M. Smith, a researcher who did a study on the effects of recycling education, it greatly increases students' knowledge of recycling, and the data from that same study shows around a 30% increase in knowledge. While many schools do not have such a curriculum yet, there are many organizations who have such programs, such as Phoenix's Zero Waste Project, who comes to schools and gives speeches about how to recycle. Such a solution, though, comes with limitations that mostly comes in the form of cost. Because it's content that's not part of the school's current curriculum, it costs money to implement. Furthermore, because it's taking time out of the already packed science curriculum, they're losing time for other subjects. It also takes time for the effects to be seen happening because they're part of the school education curriculum. As a group, we decided that the best solution was solution two. We decided this because it was the most reachable, as small changes to daily tendencies and incremental disruptions to social norms can have a large impact. A study by Gallup, a global analytics organization, stated that over 73% of Americans say they would support the movement from plastic to paper bags in supermarkets alone. This also proves why it's the most effective, because these small changes can have a great effect on the environment. Also, glass and metals like aluminum can be fully recycled by simply melting them down and reforming them. In contrast, the plastic, chemicals may sometimes be required, and different types of plastics may cause issues. This is shown by researchers from both the Frederick University of Technology and the Federal College of Education in Nigeria, who found that the melting together of different plastic types often causes phase separation, similar to that seen in boiling water. Other materials simply do not run into this problem. Additionally, glass and aluminum can be broken down into harmless materials, whereas plastic stays in the environment for many years. These factors combine to help us conclude that solution two, reducing plastic use, is the best solution. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm going to start with you, Gage. Um, reflecting on your colleagues' work, which one had the greatest impact on your overall understanding of the problem that your group identified? So Parker had the social lens of plastic recycling, and he helped me most understand the education solution and how just how important educating the public on plastic recycling could be in making changes. Okay, good. Um, could you give me... Um, Seth, could you give me one specific way that your thinking changed as a result of Gage's findings? So, Gage found uh, in his paper the scientific and safety impacts of recycling, and so he found that 
I didn't know that there were many problems with recycling regarding safety, like the safety for workers, that is actually a lot worse than I thought of. Okay. So, um, Parker, what is a way in which your team's resolution makes you think differently about your own individual research that you did for this project? I personally was looking at the social aspect of recycling and how we could encourage it, but uh, as we found out, re plastic recycling isn't always that good, and that completely changed how I was thinking about it. I was thinking about encouraging it, whereas we should be uh, replacing it. With? Uh, re different reusable materials or using more like glass and metal instead of plastic. Okay. And um, finally, Luke, uh, what's an example of a compelling argument from one of your peers' individual reports that you decided to exclude from your team presentation um, and why? We decided to exclude uh, one of Parker's arguments about how changing social norms can be uh, detrimental to society uh, because we felt that it was necessary to change the recycling process, that changing societal norms was necessary to benefit the environment. Even though it was in his report uh, to do that. Okay, great. Thank you.